Hello and welcome to Boxer's Shorts. I'm Adam Boxer and I'm a science teacher trying to help you understand more of GCSE science. In these short videos, I will try and take difficult concepts from GCSE science, break them down, um, help you understand them, and then do some practice questions on those concepts. In terms of some general tips for using these videos, definitely do not have your phone on or anywhere around you. It's a distraction and it means you won't be able to concentrate properly. The same applies for other tabs on your computer. So don't have your social media tabs open on your computer or laptop. It will just distract you. I'm going to ask you to do some questions. If you don't actually do them, you won't actually learn anything. So make sure when I do ask you to do those questions, you do them. And finally, let me know in the comments if there is a topic that you want me to cover. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can subscribe and just let me know if there's something you want me to do for you. All right, today we're going to do bond energies, um, which is where this topic starts to get really difficult. Until now, you should have done the um, sec session on uh, just general endothermic and exothermic change. You should have done the session on the reaction profiles as well. Uh, and it's now time to add a bit of kind of conceptual understanding. Why is it that in some reactions energy is taken in? and in other reactions, energy is released. Now, we're not actually gonna answer that until the end of the next video. This is kind of building us up to that point. A reminder, as we get started, your phone notifications should be off. It's best if your phone is in a different room and your tabs should definitely be closed. This one is gonna be a bit more complicated than usual. And the next one is gonna be even more complicated. So I'm gonna start with what's called a bridging analogy. So I'm gonna use something that you're a bit more familiar with to help you understand something that you're less familiar with. The thing that you're quite familiar with is magnets. So almost everyone will have studied magnets as part of their key stage three course. So you shouldn't be too unfamiliar with some of the things I'm about to show you. Now let's say I've got um, two magnets, a south and north, a south and north. Now we know that these are going to attract each other. And if I'm just holding them here and I let go, boom, they'll go to each other, they'll be attracted to each other, they'll snap together. Okay, so far so good. Now let's say I took two magnets that are already snapped together. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll do the poles the same way as I did the previous one. So it's just to make things super clear. So I've got two magnets. They are already stuck together. I'm not going to draw them touching because then it won't look like two magnets. So I've got two magnets. They are stuck together. I can pull those apart. But the thing is, to pull them apart, I need to put some energy in. If I just leave them there and don't do anything to it, nothing's gonna happen. They're gonna stay like that till the end of time. If I wanna take these two magnets and pull them apart, I need to put energy in. So energy is effectively taken in. For this one, if I just hold them and then let go, and they snap together. They are releasing energy. As they move, that's kinetic energy. When they hit each other, they're gonna warm things up a little bit as they come into contact. Also, there's some sound. So these energy is released when they snap together. So far, so good. Why are you telling us this? And the reason is because chemical bonds work under a very, very similar principle. So let's say I've got two atoms. Let's just go with two carbon atoms for the minute. And I want to get these two to bond with each other and form that. So I've got two carbon atoms. I'll make those arrows even clearer. I've got two carbon atoms that are not bonded. I want to get them to bond together. All right, then now let's say I've got two carbon atoms and they are bonded together and I want to pull those apart from each other and get carbon atoms 
that are not bonded. This process of making the bond releases energy in exactly the same way that this process releases energy. And over here, pulling these apart takes in or absorbs energy in exactly the same way that this requires energy to be taken in. So here, in order to pull them apart, I need to put energy in. Here, when they come together, energy is released. We can get rid of our magnets now, because things should make a bit of sense. What that means is that making bonds, which is what's going on here, making this bond is exothermic. This one here, breaking the bond or bonds is endothermic. So I just want to make really clear these are two separate processes. So just really quickly to recap that, if I've got two carbon atoms snapping together, boom, like a magnet, they release energy, which is an exothermic process. If I've got two carbon atoms that are bonded and I want to pull them apart from each other, I want to break that bond, I have to put energy in, which makes it an endothermic process. Now, the joy is, of course, that even though this is true of all bonds, that making any bond is going to be exothermic and breaking any bond is going to be endothermic, the amount of energy involved varies depending on the bond. So, for example, if I had a carbon-carbon bond, if I want to break that bond, I need to put in 347 kilojoules per mole. You don't need to know a huge amount about this actual unit other than the fact that this is the unit that we use. But if you do want to know, what it means is that for every mole of bonds, so if I had 6.02 times 10 to the 23 carbon-carbon bonds, I would need that much energy in order to break all of those bonds and to pull them all apart. Now, if I had two carbon atoms that were separate and I wanted to make a bond, it's also 347 kilojoules per mole. The difference is this one is in and this one is out. This process, breaking the bond, requires me to put energy in. Pull. This one, making the bonds as they snap together, releases energy to the surroundings. We could do the same for any number of bonds, and you're not expected to know these numbers off by heart. But if I had a carbon hydrogen bond, now in order to break that bond, I need, and I'm looking this up here, I need 413 kilojoules per mole in, which essentially means it's a stronger bond. I need to put more energy in in order to break it. If I were going to make that bond from a carbon and a hydrogen that are separate, I would get 413 kilojoules per mole out. All right, you're now ready to start some questions. Uh, I've given you some bond energy data. Uh, you never ever need to know these numbers off by heart. They'll always be given to you in the exam. As ever, um, pause the video, do the questions, and then when you are ready, um, press play again. <coughs> press play again, we'll go through the answers. All right, question number one, the substance has two carbon-carbon bonds. How much energy is required to break its bonds? So that would be 347 times by two. You should be using your calculator for this. I'll give you 694 kilojoules per mole. Of course, the astute among you will realize that this is all per mole, and I've been very, very simple with my language here. Um, I just want to keep it clean and easy. But in reality, we are talking about many, many billions and billions and billions of bonds. Number two, how much energy was released when its bonds were formed? Again, that would be the exact same number, 694 kilojoules per mole. Methane has four carbon-hydrogen bonds, so I'm going to do four, one, three, 
times by 4, which in my calculator gives me 1,652. I've then got one carbon-oxygen double bond and two carbon-hydrogen bonds. So I've got 799 plus uh, 413 plus 413. How much energy is released? 1,625 kilojoules per mole. All right, we're now ready to do slightly more complicated examples. And for this one, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take molecules and we're going to look at the energy required to break all the bonds in a molecule or the energy uh, released when all those bonds are made. So we'll start with a simple example, which is water, H2O. Now, ordinarily in the exam, they will show you how that is structured because, you know, it could be structured like this. And, or it could be structured like some kind of mad triangle type thing like this. Now you should actually know from your studies of covalent bonding how it's structured, but they'll probably almost always give it to you in the exam anyway, that the water looks like this. Now you wanna know how much energy is required to break these two bonds. So you go to your data table, which I've got, I took the picture from my phone um, from what was on the screen before. And I look right where well, here's OH. OH is 464. So this bond is 464. This bond is also 464. So in order to work out the total energy required to break all those bonds, I just do 464 plus 464, which should come out as 928, but I'm just going to check that. Plus 464 gives me 928 kilojoules per mole. Now, the next worked example I want to do is methane. So, methane is CH4, and the structure is a carbon with four of these hydrogens all around it, like that. Now, in fact, what I'd like to do is I'd like you to pause the screen, have a go at that one yourself, and then we will uh, do it together. All right, so you should have done that one yourself. And again, I'm going to get my trusty table that I gave you before, which was showed 413, 413, 413, and 413. I always I like to write down the numbers, and you'll see in questions a bit later on, it's going to get super complicated. It's good to actually get those numbers down. Now, actually, when I look at it, I think those arrows can be quite confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw it much bigger, like this. And I'm going to put the numbers there. That bond, 413. That bond, 413. That bond, 413. And this bond, 413. Now I can see I've got 413, I've got four 413s, so I'm just going to multiply that by 4. I'm going to do 4 times 413, and that will give me 1652 kilojoules per mole. All right, you're now ready to do some more um, practice examples yourselves. So I've got three different molecules here and I'd like you as per usual to pause the video um, and do the questions and then play when you're ready to get the answers. If you need the data for each of those bonds go back in the video find the table that I put up at first take a picture of that or copy it down and that will help you through these questions and you should pause the video now. All right, let's go through the answers. So in this one, I'm looking at a carbon-carbon bond over here, which is three, four, seven. And I've got six of these carbon hydrogens, each of which are 413. 413, 413, 413. And I'm going to label every single bond. I'm going to be very meticulous. I'm going to be very careful because I don't want to forget everything. It's a classic student error to forget things. And what I have here is then one, two, three, four, five, six lots of 413s plus one lot of 347. When I plug that into my calculator, I get 6 times 413, and I'm going to add 347 to that, and that gives me 2825 kilojoules per mole. 
If you got that right, well done. Keep keep playing the video, we'll move on to the next one. If you didn't get it right, you probably got this one and this one wrong as well. So you might want to do those again. Moving on to this one then, I've got a carbon-carbon double bond, which is 614. Notice that that's not double 347. The double bond is a different type of bond. So it's got a different amount of energy. And then I've got one, two, three, four carbon hydrogen bonds, which as before, each one is worth or takes 413, 413, 413. So I do four lots of 413 plus one lot of 614. Where's my calculator? So four times 413. I'm going to add 614 to that and I'll get 2266 kilojoules per mole. And again, if you got that one right, great, well done. If you didn't, you might want to rethink this one before we go over the answers together. Right, what have I got here? This one's a bit more complicated. So these are my easiest ones to do because I know these ones. 413, 413, 413. Same over here. 413, 413, 413. Carbon, carbon bond there is 347. I've had that before, 347. This one is new, the carbon oxygen double bond. Uh, which in your data table is 799. Sometimes it's a bit different. Gosh, that looks a bit messy. But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of those four one threes. I've got two of the three four sevens. And I've got one seven nine nine. Trusty calculator. I get six times four one three plus in brackets. Two lots of three four seven plus seven nine nine and that gives me three nine seven one kilojoules per mole. If you got all those done, if you got all those correct, well done. In the next video we'll look at how this applies, how this simple mathematics applies to an entire chemical reaction. As ever, please do remember to subscribe. And if you have any particular things that you want me to cover or a video that you don't think is clear enough, please do let me know and I will sort that out for you.